Okay, welcome back. I'm in front of some boss doors, it seems. Um, stage front. Ooh, that's interesting. But first, I'm gonna go down... And I believe there was like a well, basically. Or I went down a ladder into a well, but there was a door in there that was locked. But I believe I now have a key for it. Well, that's key. So, I'm gonna go use this thing. This area is big enough for a boss, for a boss fight. Poison. Excuse me. Alright, I am admittedly a little flustered slash stressed out after getting killed by that night guy like several times. And having that run back each time. He also took all my freaking rings. Ladder door. Go up this ladder. Bridge. Item. Oh, hello. Oh, look at that. Oh, shortcut guy. So now when I die down here, I just drop down the ladder. See if um, I can use an alluring pot on these guys. Lures human. I don't know. These guys are kind of human. Right? Oh yeah! Look at that.
Oh, piss. I hate to see that. I think I might have a solution to my problem. Okay. Ooh. Horned Warrior Sword. Curved Sword of the Horned Warriors, Keepers of the Tower. The ornamental tangled horns allow the blade to serve as a medium for horn calling. Invokes tangled horns to cover the weapon's blade, drive the weapon on the ground, call the cluster of piercing horns. Can you change the. You can't. Okay. The other guy had that great sword, which might be cool. You just kicking my frickin' ass with it. Beast liver. Gloves stitched together from the flayed skin of victims of a eh, blood, blood, butcherous bloodbath. Afflicts targets of deadly poison, raise attack power and poisoning, occurs in the vicinity. Forged to the unyielding black impulse towards revenge, fostered in those who have had everything burned or stolen from them. These are the weapons of the utterly downtrodden. So the utterly downtrodden are the burning of poison. To get back at the world. If only I had a horse. Um, uh, I mean, how do I get here? Am I supposed to be able to jump this? It's just an item on a dude that died. Okay. Oh, not that. Shit. 
shit on this stuff, so it'll order. Okay, this side of the poison lake is clear. Summon, yeah. Let's go get him bean. Ceremonial accoutrement worn by Horn Song vastly raises immunity. Horns are sublime artifacts to Horn Tong. Their presence confirms the belief that they are a chosen people. Only the repeated sprouting of flesh fresh horns can create a tangled horn which is viewed as an irrefutable symbol of prime primus primal seat primacy. Primacy. Any good items out here? Smiting stone, poison bomb, dart. Borkin ring, sliver of meat. Dead. Uh, I guess that's it. Just sent me down here to get that poison bone charm. Okay. Uh, back up now to stage front, and I'm assuming there's a boss in here. I'm gonna fight this boss, and it's probably gonna be the last thing of my day. Okay, here I am. I'm going into the stage front boss. Uh, there's a summon sign here for this red main lady. Um, I'll I'll give it a few goes without her there. Um, I'm gonna switch this back to item type. Go there. I have no idea what to expect. Um, let me just do that guy. No, that guy. Um, 
I'm gonna swap the physic up a bit. I'm a big, uh, excuse me, crag blade fan. Um, I'm gonna take a moment just to look at how much um, one of these upgrades does. So I'm at 805. And if I use this thing, if I use a scatter tree blessing, I am now at 841. That's significant. That is very significant. I didn't look at the damage, but um, or the, the damage the resistance, but um, that's a very significant buff. What was I gonna do here? Physical. Uh, I'm not really doing that many charge attacks. So, Crag Blade does work well with trying to break stances. Um, I'll probably just go with Opalin or Deer. And uh, I'm gonna do. This do that. Hold it. I probably might go back and summon the Ridmy Lady because sometimes you get um emotes. Oh horn decked beast from higher sphere delivered. Take root inside the tower sculpted keepers, and perched within, we beg of thee, rise.
so I'm going to cut in a voiceover here. Currently, what you're looking at is me <laughs> trying to learn the boss. Admittedly, this took me, let's see, I don't know. It took me several hours, many attempts. I died quite a lot. I ended up making a spreadsheet um, to take notes of the things that I was learning each death. I was trying to make sure that I was learning the boss's attacks um, such that I would better understand how to dodge them. There were a few particular ones which would give me trouble. The main one being, in the normal phase, the kind of lunge attack he does. There's a swipe attack where his head is low to the ground and he winds up to the side. There's a big headbutt attack where he raises his head high in the air before slamming it down. The one that gave me the most trouble was this lunge attack where he would raise his head up a little bit and out to the side and then lunge at you relatively quickly. So I was trying to make notes and make it a, keep them in the spreadsheet basically so that I could better learn and progress on this boss. Um, I was definitely struggling. Um, I would say panic rolling was a part and definitely gave me a hard time. So I was working on trying some things out um, to improve my play and try to learn the boss. I feel like I have done a relatively good job at learning the boss. I feel like I have a good understanding of it now. And I intend to follow this video up with a more detailed boss fight video just for this boss um, with the things that I've learned. I don't expect it to be the best boss guide ever written for this guy or that will be written for this guy but at the very least um, i feel like i can share the knowledge that i picked up um, to help other people who show up and want to try to understand it better i mean there are still definitely things that i could try to understand better such as right here there was an opportunity for me to uh, punish the boss before it starts its breath so when it does that double spiral attack It'll do one spiral, which you don't have to roll, you can run away from. Then on the second spiral, you can dodge into that spiral. And after that, it's gonna do like lift its head out of the ground and do like an attack out of by its head. But because you rolled into the second spiral, you're not gonna get hit by it. And right here, you can actually just walk up to its butt and hit it before the breath. So there are some opportunities and gaps where I wasn't getting as much damage in on the boss as possible. And those are things that, um, I think ended up making a large difference in my performance. Really what tipped me over the edge for killing the boss was actually capitalizing on more attack windows than I was otherwise. I had been playing really passive, just trying to stay back and learn how to dodge all of the different attacks. This circle breath gave me a lot of trouble because it looks easy, but the boss is like moving a lot while he's spinning and he'll actually just kind of push you around and it makes it hard to keep track of where you are relative to the breath. Those two lightning attacks, as soon as you see that lightning bolt come up, you need to roll dodge that more or less immediately. Here's this breath attack. So you can just go in there and plan to roll it, but I find it better to space the first two because if you're close to him, he just pushes your character around and it's hard to kind of keep place of where you are. The other most difficult thing about this boss is honestly the camera. He's pretty big and long and he's in your face moving around a lot. And it's kind of hard to just keep his face in your camera the whole time. His face is kind of what gives away his attacks, to me anyway. Um, like right here, that up a little bit into the side means that lunge attack is coming in. Um, and when he's dashing around all the time and he's so hard to keep in the focus of your camera, a lot of times it can be difficult to be able to read him just due to the camera issues. So anyway, I'm intending on making a dedicated video just to the boss. Um, but I, for this video, I'm just going to throw this in here a little bit. I'm going to put this in between my first attempt on the boss and my kill attempt on the boss. And that's going to be the extent of what I include for this playthrough video. So. I imagine before I make any more playthrough videos, I'm going to go ahead and edit together a boss video for this. Again, I don't expect it to be the most in-depth, rigorous, knowledgeable video on a boss, but I at least feel like I can put together some of the knowledge I gain um, into a video and see maybe it'll help somebody out. That would be cool. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut this over now to my kill video. 
I will take a quick second, I guess, while I'm here to just go over a couple additional things other than what I've already talked about. So the boss goes through a th few different phases. Um, you've seen the normal one where he starts out, there's no elemental affinity. He goes then through a lightning, a frost, and like a wind one. The What you need to know for the lightning one, I've already said, he just when he gets the lightning bolt in his hand, dodge it really fast. For the frost one, when he throws attacks at you, he's going to make frost like appear on the ground under wherever he just attacked at with his head so i think you can mostly just roll and time it right but it seemed the case where sometimes you needed to roll the correct direction to not end up in frost after your roll uh for the wind one what i think the only really important thing is to know that his backflip tail attack sends like a gust of air at you there's another one where he spins up in a big tornado and sends you a big circle of air at you that one's relatively straightforward just run to the side roll it at the right time so I'm going to go ahead and cut now to my attempt that I got the kill on. And just for what it's worth, again, I, uh, this took me several hours, like dozens, I, I don't, 40, 50 attempts. Like I am, I had a hard time with the boss. So um, if you're having a hard time, uh, I en encourage you just to keep at it. The more you see something, the more you learn it, the better you'll get at it. But um, that's all I got for now. I'm going to cut over. One thing I will say is that in the recording, my game volume is much louder than my voice recording volume. So I'm going to, in the future, make sure to scale down the game volume and up my voice recording volume. And the music in particular on this boss was just really loud. But uh, cool. I'm going to go ahead and cut it back over and uh, hope you guys have a good one.
Come on. I rolled too early, but I thought I had the direction. Can't see. Yeah! Finally. Do -do -do -do. Nice. Alright, what do we got here? Remembrance of the Dancing Lion. Hewn into the Scatter Tree. Interesting. Gray ashes instead of, or gray remembrance instead of a gold one. Excuse me. <clears throat> the power of its namesake can be unlocked by the finger reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. When the Impaler's army sailed the tower, the ritual of the lion dance was turned towards martial ends. So the Impaler, being Mesmer, sailed this tower. So this tower might have been home to a bunch of horny, horned people. <laughs> uh, it's divinity, it's fury, it's light-footed beauty. Man, I would love to see it's light-footed beauty, but it's hard to keep it, you know, in your freaking view of your camera. Divine beast head. I'm gonna delete, and I'm gonna immediately go sell this. I never want to see this ever in my inventory. <coughs> Excuse me. Worn by the very finest of the sculpted keepers. No longer responds to the old woman's earnest prayer. No longer responds to the old woman's earnest prayer. Divine invocation heightens intensity of the storm alongside strength and dexterity. Oh yeah, okay, so it's increasing. You get plus four strength and dex. Reduces restorative effect of drinking from a flask of sacred tears. Heightens intensity of the storm. Does that mean you get like extra lightning damage? That'd be cool. You could, yeah. I mean, running this on the um, lightning quality build. <clears throat> Focus is troubled, so I guess here so come to madness easier. Holy shit! You lose a ton of. Oh, never mind. Maybe not that much. Yeah, okay, yeah, you don't lose that much, but you do lose some. I don't know, you do lose a lot of focus, I think. Anyway. Okay, that is that. Um, I'm going to rest here and then go to... Uh, and here's my equipment for whatever it's worth. Let's go check out what this remembrance offers. Hello. Oh, armor. You can get what? It raises the potency of storms. 
Charmed at picking the crazed, cavorting dance that the Divine Beast conducted at the Tower Festival raises potency of storms. Divine Beasts are messengers of the heavens, and their rage mirrors the tum tumult, tumult, the tumult of the skies, of which storms are the pinnacle. Potency of storms, like is that lightning damage or? Divine Beast, Frost Stomp, Cold Affinity, Wrath of the Divine Beast, Level Legacy, Stamp It Down, Great Force. I wonder if the, so is this just, since a powerful wave of frost can be charged. Oh, this is sick. It's like a, I guess that's just like a bigger Horror Frost Stomp. <laughs> Hoor. <laughs> Hoor Frost. <laughs> Hoor Frost Stomp. Okay. Uh, theater of the Divine Beast. Okay, um, this seems like a good place for me to finally go back and maybe try to put together and upload um, footage up until this point. Um, I kind of just grinded this boss for a few hours uh, immediately after just kind of cramming the game for the last um, few days. So, uh, I think I'm going to take a bit here to bring it it's probably gonna take me a few hours um, to get the footage together that I've recorded up to this point um, I also want to kind of edit together like a video just about this boss um, so I might take a, a bit to do that uh, before I continue onwards so um, that's the plan I'll see you on the next one hope you have a good one